Warner uh, or Millie to, to to her friends and I get well I'll count as all as friends here until somebody says something uh, embarrassing in which case I will stop uh, how what's your kind of work set up in terms of because you're out in the country at the moment uh, do you have a separate studio or work in the kind of uh, in the room there how how's it all work for you um I have a separate I'm lucky we have a kind of little um outhouse that I've turned into a a studio we haven't been in this house for for very long so I haven't done much to it and it's still it's really just got my piano in there and my desk and that's it and then um so yeah that's kind of something I'm trying trying to do at the moment is just get everything ready and in, I had a really good setup in our old house because it was a studio but it was hidden behind the, the back of the garage and um and so the kid the kids didn't know it was there so it was kind of brilliant because I could just I could be like bye I'm going to work and they didn't know so oh, it was a actually coat like, and a hat on yeah, just... yeah. <laughs> and I used to crawl down the driveway sometimes when they were in a certain room and I knew they'd see me and I'd have to like crawl to get to the kitchen and it was so silly but, it, but they really didn't know it was there for like well over a year so it was, it was, I got a lot done in that in that studio. Was there a reveal much like the Tooth Fairy or Santa Claus where they kind of go? No, it was just one day. My, my eldest daughter just arrived, was just there. I was like, no. <laughs> All my time um, is gone. She worked out, my car was still there, and she was like, hmm. Mm, where like, is she? We live in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah. So, she worked it out. Oh, um, do you find uh, that your working methods themselves, or even this, your sort of imagination uh, musically, is changed by what equipment you've got access to so do you sort of because you've at the moment just got a piano or a sort of you know a basic setup in there do, do you find where your musical head goes to is different yeah i think so although i'm i mean i'm not um i i pretty much always just write from the piano anyway or that's always where i start um you know, I very rarely write on anything else. Um, so, so I guess that hasn't changed. And then I usually, I usually kind of write the, the skeleton of something and then I'll take it and put it into, you know, um, and start using samples and start kind of having fun with it. But um, so it hasn't changed that much really. Um, but I've definitely just been doing a lot more just, yeah, just piano pieces um, without any other bit. Have your sort of journey through, through composing. And I know, Millie, in a way you're, um, Am I, am I right in saying that that it was sort of EPs first and like arms and things like that? That that was that the first music that that you were commercially releasing, and that yeah. that was the top the top of sort of the the top slice of of lots of things that you'd done before. But but that's when you found gave yourself yeah, permission to I, do it. Yeah, it was kind of so. I did um, I did arms, and I was and then I was. Um, also releasing some music as Slow Moving Millie as a kind of singer songwriter, but that was I think there was it was almost like a kind of um, side project, and then the stuff that I was releasing as Amelia Warner and the, the EPs and stuff was was the kind of music that I really wanted to make, um, and um, and then through my second EP um, was called um, Visitors, and and a director heard some of the music from that and was interested in using it for um for a film and then it ended up kind of that I just wrote the score around that existing piece um oh, and, and, and before that I had already done a few I'd, I'd been doing some commercials I'd been doing some shorts and so I knew that you know uh writing music to picture was you know what I wanted to do and where I kind of felt the most ex excited and comfortable and um but it was but yeah it was a slightly strange path and have you found that um, having initially sort of established yourself with that artist, um, sort of uh, putting out some music into the world that that was in your voice, then because uh, some of the artists that, that we've had on feel that they don't get offered the wider range of projects because they they sort of exist in people's minds as this sort of narrow. Uh, narrow artist without the range but then people who've come up through the traditional film and tv composer route feel that they haven't got a voice they've got too wide a range and, and they they can't sort of speak as an artist do, do, do you have a, an eye for how you'd like things to go over the next few years are, are there genres that you haven't done that you'd like to for instance 
Yeah, I think it's interesting, and I think there's I think there's benefits, and and then also you know always a downside to. I think it's nice to have a sound and a signature sound, and something that people you know think of you when they hear something or they think you know i think that can be quite a useful thing um to be to, to have something that's quite definitive um and uh and, and kind of distinctive but then um then obviously you don't want to get pigeonholed into only doing that same sound again and again um so yeah i mean i think um i just yeah hope that i would get the chance to do all sorts of different genres and actually it felt quite lucky to, to do when, when I did Mary Shelley because it felt like that was a bigger orchestral kind of movie and I got the chance yeah. to show it I think you know a different side to the more kind of simple piano stuff that I'd done up until then. Um, was it a, uh, a, a gear change in uh, lots of uh, practical and uh, sort of um, should we say emotional resilience ways was it was it a tough gig or a Dream yeah, gig. it was. It was a. It was both. It was a dream gig and it was a tough gig. And it and it was one of those weird things where, creatively, I felt very sure of what I wanted to achieve, <laughs> and I had a very clear vision of it. But the execution was really tough. And even like I remember the first, because um, I'd only done one film before that, and then and even just the, the initial kind of sending stuff to the editor and not even knowing how to label it and him kind of saying ah it would really help if you wrote that you know just really really simple things that i was doing so wrong yeah. um so it was you know real learning uh, learning curve but i but i did luckily feel really confident in what i was writing and in how i wanted it to sound it was just kind of getting it to that point and, and also getting the people that i was working with to to imagine what that would be and to have to kind of sell it sell the idea when i didn't necessarily you know because I, I, it was hard to to imagine you know for them to imagine what it was going to be definitely definitely a, a, a couple of questions that people have sent in about uh, one about demo reels from nicholas escobar and but also one from uh, rosemary armstrong who said that she discovered your music from mum's list uh, particularly good for meditation and wondered if any of the composers actually have other things in mind when they compose a piece of music i think i'm going to squidge those two and quite a few other questions into into a, a thing about a storytelling either musically but also the sort of the story that that surrounds us so do, do you kind of uh coming from your sort of slow movement millie project which was very much about about musical storytelling are, are you driven by very much by the, the story of uh, a film and a film or a TV show, and how do you feel about the music when it's taken in isolation? It, do, do you think that it has a story of its own at that point? Yeah, I, I think it. I think it depends. I think sometimes. Um, I think sometimes they can, and I think sometimes. Um, I mean, with even with the. Um, the kind of EPs that I've released. I mean, I'm about to, I've got another one coming out in two weeks, which oh, luckily really? I managed to record before nice. um, all of this. And weirdly, the theme of that EP is all about, it's called Haven and it's all about home. Um, and it's about being at home, being safe, being in this kind of space, which we've all ended up you know, being in more than we expected. <laughs> um, but so, so around the EPs, I always kind of create some form of narrative mm. and with the the last one that I did it was a kind of about an empty house and about the people who had lived in it previously and so I, I think I have to I think I need some kind of story to write I find it really hard to just kind of write you know something that um you know that is almost like an emotional thing or I, I, I have to make it about something else or about some kind of broader theme or some kind of broader story um, and I think that's why I really love writing to picture because you've got that thing to respond to yeah. that's kind of outside of you and outside of your experience um, and I, I prefer writing like that I think and I think that's why yeah with the EPs they've, they've had a narrative to each one that I've kind of constructed um, I, I, I think that's uh, it's fascinating. Do you, in terms of the narrative, I'm kind of, because uh, I've had two or three questions from people as well, asking about, uh, for, for all of us, uh, about our social media presence and, and what it means to kind of exist in 
sort of in in society right now what the story is that surrounds surrounds us all as people and it, and is it important because i think when i mean when when i started writing free social media then uh the narrative around each composer was very much more as ollie described it is the narrative is just told by the last person you worked with who who said you were either any good or you were useless and yeah. and the storytelling was really different now but th there seems to be a, a a pressure on young writers to, to not just for their work to have a story but for them to have a story too and obviously you're active on social media do you do you uh try and uh, naturally con construct a narrative around yourself as a composer, do you think? I, th I think I kind of resisted social media for quite a long time. And, and I think I've um, struggled with what with navigating that thing because because I was an actress for a bit. So I had a kind of a different kind of presence, I guess. Um, and then I stopped doing that and I kind of re, you know, um, started doing other things and went on a kind of different path. Um, and then, and then I'm also, I'm married to somebody who's well known and it, so it can get really complicated and really difficult. And initially I just found it a lot easier to have no, uh, online presence and no, to not invite in any of that kind of, um, you know, uh, just to not have that, just to not be thinking about any of it and to just be trying to get on with working. Um, but, um, but then I've also, I, I sometimes think that there's a empowerment in like controlling the narrative a bit more and having a little bit more, um, you know, of a say in how you, what your story is. And like you said, and, and not that it's, and just kind of being a bit more open and a bit more honest about who I am and what my life is and the things that I find beautiful and the things that I'm interested in and the things that kind of inform my work and, and inspire me. And, and so I've, I, I've kind of been, for the last year doing that. And I, I actually, I do like having that, um, that way of kind of presenting yourself um, with, with, no, with no kind of middleman. You're not relying on what other people are, other people are saying or, you know. But I have a, I'm in a weird position basically is what I'm trying to say yeah. with just other external factors yeah. that you I, know, I have to kind of manage. Yeah, I, I, I think it's interesting. And thanks, thanks for being, you know, just kind of straightforward about that. Cause it, and, and come to you, uh, Mary Shelley. Did you crew up, and and if so, how how did you find your collaborators, partners in crime? Um, I I did. Um, I I worked with a really great orchestrator um, called Nathan Klein, and he works at Airedale. And, oh, um, amazing! Yeah. I um, yeah, I I can't actually remember even how. I kind of found him, but I think it was just through somebody recommended Nick Taylor. And then he, Nick said, you know, you should, cause I just needed help, um, you know, fleshing out demos and, oh, and yeah, also with sure. um, the, the orchestration. And yeah. so he was, he was incredible. Um, and we've done a couple of projects since he actually produced um, my EP that I just did that's oh, coming out. Yeah. And he, um, we've also done a couple of shorts as well in between, um, but he's just amazing. And it was really great having, um, working with him and I would definitely work with him again hopefully um, yeah. so and but th that was kind of it it was kind of yeah. me and it was kind of me and him and I, I did probably did the initial um, kind of couple of months first to just get the, you know the, the idea and the textures and the, the shape of it and then Nathan came in and you know just helped me get it to that next place and, and help with the, um, the sessions as well. Uh, did you record at Aerodel? You, uh, no, we we recorded the EP Aradel, and we recorded um, the, the short that I did. But then the uh, Mary Shelley, we recorded it in Dublin. Oh, did you? Oh, uh, big yeah. orchestra. How how was it? Was it fun? It was amazing. Yeah, we had such an amazing, um, really great experience. It was really, it was it was kind of one of those things where I think there wasn't really an option of where it was like it had to be in in Ireland just because of the way that they you know the the money was in the film. Yeah. Um, and, um, but yeah, no, we had like a really great experience with the, um, yeah, with, with, mm. with doing it in Dublin. It was at Windmill, Windmill Lane um, wow. studio and it, yeah, it, was, it was great. It was really, really fun. I think often uh, talking to um, a lot of other composers and, and, and also in my experience as well, that, that there's often something about those early relationships that you make that can, uh, that I, I think you've, often find people to work with at a time that's quite vulnerable that you feel like it's um 
which is often where, where strong bonds are made. So I, I know so many composers who, who actually do uh, work with the same people year after year after year and then end up doing 30 years, 40 years with the same engineer or the same orchestrator or the same players to a certain extent. And you, and you kind of grow up and, and, and grow through. Because I can see why, because I think if you have, if you're lucky enough to find that relationship and you have to get through that kind of awkward initial period where you're finding language and, and yeah. getting to know each other. Once you've kind of got to that point where you have a shorthand and you understand what each other mean and what they want and, and I think it's, it's kind of invaluable, isn't it? Yeah, no, totally, totally. Um, I'm just going to flip to, uh, uh, why do you, why do you do it? Why, why write? I mean, I've always done it and it's just something that like since I was really small, I just would always um, come up with with melodies and compositions. And it's just something that I've just always, always done. And then I and I like similar to John, I just love always loved films and I always loved music and I loved film music. And so I guess the idea, you know, once I realized that that was something I, you know, potentially could do that was just the you know the, the dream for me um and um and and strangely since having children i found that it's it really kind of um distilled what it was i wanted to do and I, I felt kind of more determined and more sure because i've got three daughters and i just felt like this is what i want you know i want them to see me doing something that i'm passionate about and something that i love and i want them to see that that is possible um, and so, and then I've also just been really excited about, you know, all sorts of different storytelling and like we were saying yeah. with, with my own kind of releases and the EPs and then during lockdown I've been working on a musical idea that I've been thinking about for years and years and years. It's an adaptation yeah. for a children's musical and so I've been doing that and that's just been a really fun, that's been a completely different um, experience but really, really fun and I just, any way of music um, kind of uh, music and narrative and stories and telling stories with music is just I find it just kind of so much fun and I, I love exploring all different ways of doing that. I, I find the uh, your, your comment about about family and your daughters and and them having a, a kind of role model really I, I find that really interesting because I know for myself that that I've spent probably more hours working on stuff that I'm less convinced of the merit of that i that i i'd like to have some of those hours back if i could and and so now with a, with a couple of little kids i think i'm steering my ship a bit more to be a bit more selective and, and sort of quality yeah. over quantity and do yeah i was a slow starter though i felt like i it took me a really long time to figure yeah. out what it was i wanted to do you know i kind of yeah. i i was so so i didn't get there until recently so now that you know i kind of um, it. that I'm doing it yeah definitely I don't know that's what would be your final thought for the room um yeah I agree with with that um just try to be uh you know a nice person to work with and I think especially with film and tv and you know, it's very often like it's not about you and it's about a bigger it's a collaborative thing and it's about you know it's it's your music is part of that but it's not you know the you can't obsess too much about how you know you think it should be it's all about taking notes and being flexible and I think that's really important um but I would also say to really trust in your instincts and try and really just listen to you know your first reaction to something is often really the mm, most interesting yeah. or the most most kind of the thing you'll end up probably coming back to after doing like 10 other things in between so I think that's something that can be a really a real strength is just just going with that first instinct and really trusting it totally can i just can i just say one more thing <laughs> uh no 